Sorry about that video card uh, shorted out on me for a second, but we are back uh, for game two against Scapeshift. We were hit for approximately a billion damage from Angry Rocks, so we're going to try to do better this time. Going to bring in some Duresses, Fulminator Mages, Surgical Extractions, all pretty powerful options against a spell combo deck like Scapeshift that's also relying on its lands. Uh, definitely possible that our opponent could be boarding in some kind of smaller creature package. Oftentimes they have something like Obstinate Baelith just to buy some time and put some pressure on their opponents. So probably don't want to board out all my pass. Um, that being said, not something I want to rely on. So Timely Reinforcements is not particularly impressive. Oriac Champion also kind of stinks for similar reasons. It's just kind of this 1-1 one -one that... It's hard to kill, but doesn't really put any pressure on our opponent, so I think we're pretty happy just to go ahead and cut those from our deck. In case you're wondering how much damage you get dealt, with nine lands and two Valakits. Uh, our, our opponent was able to <laughs> target every single creature we had played twice and still kill us, so. Needless to say, the scale from uh, seven beyond is pretty impressive. This hand's fine. We have a piece of disruption, some pressure. Kind of what we're looking for here. Just going to lead on this shambling event since we really want to get this bitter blossom to play on turn two and start attacking our opponent not imperative that we break up what they're doing with thought sees immediately since they're kind of a, a slower than most combo decks they're certainly not like a turn three deck or whatever it's like a turn five turn six deck escape shift is more of a, a controlling combo deck than a pure combo deck Since we have these Thought Seasons in our hand and a Bitter Blossom, I have no illusions that we're going to stay above uh, 18 life, so it doesn't really matter if we take a little bit of extra damage from our Gala Shrines. Because we're going to miss our land drop, we're just going to go ahead and lead on this Thought Seize since we can't build our board to put more pressure on our opponent. So three lands bring to light, Remance, Cure Tribe Builder, and Scape Shift. Uh, we could try to burn both our Thought Seizes to hit his kill conditions, Bring to Light and Scape Shift, but I don't think that's really the best way to approach this matchup, uh, particularly because our opponent's hand is quite slow. I think we just want to hit the Secure Tribe Elder and then not give them the opportunity to cycle their remand. Alternatively, I could just play the Thought Seize. Hmm. So I could actually just take their remand and then Thought Seize away the Secure Tribe Elder, leaving just a bunch of expensive kill conditions. And what that allows me to do is play Lingering Souls, should I draw a land next turn, and doesn't give my opponent the opportunity to draw an extra card. I think I actually like that option the best given what our hand is. Not the most intuitive choice, but I think if our objective is just to get our opponent dead, then this is a good place to kind of pick our spot and take a weird line with our discard spells. Uh, opponent drew a stomping ground for the turn. We drew our third land so we can play Lingering Souls. And now we can play Intangible Virtue on the following turn and really deal a bunch of damage. Since we drew a fourth land, we now have the option of playing our Gideon Ally of Syndicar. Our opponent does have a Bring to Light in their hand, so it's possible they can play it for four next turn and search up a Damnation to clear the board. So there's definitely a little bit of appeal to diversifying our board position a little bit by playing the Gideon. 
So this turn we can attack for four, put our opponent to 15 life, make a knight. Then if our opponent plays damnation, we can choose to uptick Gideon and animate Shambling Vent, which deals seven damage, putting our opponent to eight, uh, which does present lethal on the following turn. Alternatively, we can Attack for five, play Lingering Souls, Flashback, and Tangible Virtue, and that can set up lethal as well. I think it's just a little safer to diversify. We can theoretically present lethal if our opponent doesn't have black mana for the Bring Delight, but I think that's just a, a little too unlikely, so I'm gonna play my Gideon and just be a little safer for a potential bring to light. Okay. So I can only play Bring to Light for three. That should be interesting. Maybe a Maelstrom pulls? Oh, Anger of the Gods. Okay, that makes sense. Drew Windburst Kites. Pretty interesting. I think we're just going to stick to the plan that I outlined on the previous turn. Play this Lingering Souls. Play Intangible Virtue. Take up Gideon. Attack for five. Put our opponent to ten. I guess there's no reason not to just lead on Wimbrus Kites first, just to get an idea of anything might change. So if we're actually able to attack with three creatures on the following turn, I think the Intangible Virtue is definitely going to be lethal. So there's not much argument to taking the Fulminator Mage here. Uh, this Ghost Quarter is effectively going to do nothing if our opponent is able to combo us on the following turn, so there's no reason to sit behind that. I think we're better off just getting on the board and hoping that our opponent doesn't have a ramp spell to pair with their escape shift. Okay, there's a search for Mara, so we're dead if our opponent has another land they can play untapped. And there we go. Uh, so our plan might have backfired, to be honest. I thought, given the information we had at the time, it would be safe just to try to get aggressive and take the cheap spells and just attack our opponent to death, but not how it worked out, so definitely might have just made a mistake with the line that I took this game. So yep, our opponent gets six mountains and Valakit, and they're going to point lots of fire to our face, so we're going to fall to one and two.